All right. So now we are going to look at using data analysis to construct a histogram in Excel. So the first thing you see I have in Excel is here is my data set page. And we have a variable that is ID. This is just a participant ID number, just given to them instead of having their name, right? For confidentiality in databases, we often use a participant ID number. So this is basically just the order they entered the study in. And you see that we have 107 people in the study. We have measures of stress and we have measures of physical symptoms that they're experiencing. Um, and these exist on different scales. So we can look at doing some descriptive statistics, um, getting things like the means, the standard deviations, maximums and minimums. Uh, and we can also look at making histograms. Both frequency tables and histograms can be made by data analysis. Now, what I'm going to do first is let's talk about the stress variable. And let's get some descriptive statistics for it first. So I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to data analysis. And you see that I've got several options under this, including descriptive statistics. Now, if I want to make this even easier to use, Excel lets you name data sections. So I can select my data here. All of these numbers are my data. And these numbers through 108, okay, are the data for stress. So I can name this stress. And now that entire set of numbers, if I want to call it up, I can just type in stress. So what if we didn't use data analysis? We could do some descriptives in Excel like this. Equals average. This is the command to get the mean for a data set. And now I can type in stress. And you'll see that, look, when I type in stress, it recognizes that I'm talking about this set of data. So I can get the average for stress, and I see that the average, right, the mean is 21.29. I can also do things like get the standard deviation. So this is the sample standard deviation for stress, right? And there's my standard deviation. So 12.5 points, right? I could get things like the minimum value for stress. It's as low as 1. And I can get things like the maximum value for stress. So it goes from 1 to 58 with an average of around 21 and about 12 and a half points variability on average. So I see these pieces of data. Now based on this, um, because I knew this in advance, I created here another thing that says class. And this class variable is required if you're going to make histograms using data analysis. Because Excel requires you to have what we call bins. And bins are basically the markers. Um, so these markers tell you what numbers should go in which bin. So when I say the bin here ends at 5, then numbers from 1 to 5 are all going to be stuck in this bin. right? And numbers from 5 to 10 will be stuck in this bin. Okay, So I have these kinds of options that allow me to make a histogram using that. So you should immediately recognize that these options then are dependent on the distribution of your data. You would not want to make classes, for example, that only went to 5 when you know your data goes to 58. In some cases, if you have a smaller amount of data, you would not make bins that are as wide as five points. You might make every bin just one point. So these are things you have to think about when you look at the descriptive statistics for your data. So let's look at getting the descriptive statistics with data analysis and the histogram with data analysis now. So we'll go to data analysis, and we're going to first go to the descriptive statistics option. Under descriptive statistics, you see that we need to have an input range. Well, I named my variable stress. That's what I want to analyze. And I'm going to put my output right here. When I click this output range, it tells it where do I want my results. I want my results right over here, because notice that's not going to overwrite any of my original data. Okay, So I'm going to take this data, and I'm going to get some summary statistics. Okay, Let's see what we get when we do this. <clears throat> Here's our output. You see that we get the mean, standard error, the median, the mode, the standard deviation. You'll notice that the mean and the standard deviation match what's already calculated, as do the minimum and maximum. So you see that we get all the information we could want. We get kurtosis and skewness to assess normality of the distribution. 
uh, we have the number of scores that we have. All of these different things are available to us. So having these descriptives, you then would build your bins appropriately to go back and use data analysis to make a histogram. So I'm going to go to data analysis and histogram. I'm going to hit OK. My input range again is stress. Now I didn't name my bin range, and I could have, but instead I can also just go over here and highlight my bin range. So when I do that, it's going to show up here. So I have my input range as my variable, and then I have my bin range or the classes that I created here. Okay. I'm going to again put the output. I'm going to put it in K this time so that there is again no overwriting of other data. I'm going to get a chart output because I don't just want a table, I also want the picture, the histogram. You see you can also get cumulative percentages or Pareto charts. So when I've done this and I hit OK, let's see what happens. All right. So we see that I get my frequency table that shows me there are nine scores between one and five, 12 scores up to 10 from the five, so on and so forth. We only have one score that comes after 56, but you see that we have all these scores appropriately. Now you notice Excel here made an extra box called more, and this is kind of a catch-all in case you didn't go high enough. But in true histograms, People don't like this. This does not look professional. So I suggest that you go in and you delete this information. Okay, Shift your cells back up. Get rid of more. Now it's gone. So your histogram doesn't have that more option. Okay, We can make the histogram a little bigger to look at it. Okay, We have our frequency data across our bins. Okay. Now you can name your bin something else if you wanted to, you know, classes or whatever your actual variable was, you know, stress levels. So technically these are stress levels in groups, so I can go in and name this stress if I want to for clarity, okay? The other thing that we can do is histograms, technically the bars are expected to touch. They're not touching here. We can fix that pretty quickly. What we can do is go select the bars and we can format the data series here so that we remove space between them. So you see that the gap width is set at 150. If we shrink this gap width down to zero, you see that our bars now touch. When you do that, a lot of times people like to um, put a border so that you can see the lines being separated still, um, even though they are now touching. So I can put a border to separate my lines to make it look a little more professional. And if you don't want this frequency because it's implied by the axis, you can just delete it. Just click on and hit delete. And you now see that I have a histogram for my data. I have my descriptive statistics all done in Excel using the data analysis tool pack. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Let me know if you have additional questions.